Hi there. Let's take a few minutes just to look at a really important measure of inequality, either of income or of wealth, uh, in, an, in an economy. And this concept is called the Lorenz curve. Here's a striking chart which uh, comes out every year. It's the annual survey of wealth from Credit, Credit Suisse, uh, their global wealth database. And according to Credit Suisse's latest report for 2016, uh, Russia is far and away the most unequal country in the world when it comes to wealth. If you just take the share of total wealth of the richest percentile, or the richest 1%, then 74.5% of the country's wealth is controlled by that, that richest 1%. So 99% of the population have the remaining 25.5%. In countries like India and Thailand, the top 1% control 58% of each country's wealth. In the United States, lower, uh, and China lower, but, but still over 40%. So in other words, if we were to just to think about the top 1%, or the top percentile, then clearly when it comes to wealth, the income distribution would be extremely highly skewed uh, towards that group. Now it's the Lorenz curve which helps us to visualize this information. So the Lorenz curve is essentially a cumulative income curve. It's a, it's a nice, simple graphical representation, either of income or wealth inequality, developed over 100 years ago by an American economist, Max Lorenz. It's a cumulative income curve, and what we do is we divide the population up into groups. We could do deciles, 10%, we could do percentiles, 1%. But typically in exams, the data you're given is quintiles. So this means we divide the population into five groups. The fifth quintile is the richest quintile. They have 20% of the disposable income or, or wealth, however, whatever it is we're measuring. The poorest quintile is the first quintile, and that's the poorest 20% of households, again, for example, according to disposable incomes. Let's take a simple numerical example to show how we create the Lorenz curve. So I've divided my households, my total population, up into five groups, ranging from the first quintile, the poorest, 20%, through to the fifth quintile, the richest quintile. Now this is made up data, just to help, uh, help um, understand the point. So let me throw in some disposable incomes, and this is typically the share of total disposable income going to each group. And the poorest quintile have the lowest share because that's, that's the way the data is organised. So the Lorenz curve is a cumulative curve. So the poorest 20% have 3% of the income. Then if we add on the next quintile, we get to 10%. Then we add on another 12%, we get to 22% and so on. And if you do it that, that's what you get. Now what you then do is you plot that cumulative curve across the income, incomes of households. So the Lorenz curve is a nice visual representation of, of inequality. Uh, on the y-axis, you have cumulative income, as we've just calculated, up to 100%. On the x-axis, from left to right, we go from the poorest quintile through to the richest quintile. Now, the line of equality. If there was no inequality, then the Lorenz curve would be a straight diagonal line, 45 degree angle, uh, starting at the origin and going to the top right. In other words, every household would have essentially the same income. And half the population, 50% of the households, have 50% of the income. We know, of course, that's not the case. Think about our 1% example at the start of this, this, uh, this talk. So what would the Lorenz curve look like with high inequality? Perhaps you can visualise it. Well, it would look something like this. This would be a Lorenz curve with very high inequalities. You notice here that the households at the poorest, uh, first decile, second decile, quintiles, etc. You know, it could be the case that the bottom 50% of households have less than 10% of the income, whereas most, most of the income lies in the hands of the richest 10%, 20%, 5%, and as we've seen, the richest 1%. Keep in mind, in Russia, the richest 1% of households have 
5% of income, of wealth. That's the low ends curve with high income inequality. This would be a slightly less skewed low ends curve showing lower inequality. But again, you know, the majority of the income lies with the richest half of the population, whereas the poorest half have a relatively small share. So that's how we draw the lens curves. And the key in the exam is to either use the data you're given to construct a lens curve or to think about how the curve will, will shift if this level or depth of inequality changes. Just a final quick point, and that is that we use the lens curve to calculate uh, a sort of a number to do with inequality, and that number is called the Gini coefficient. Now, the Gini coefficient, we've got a separate video on this, but the Gini coefficient is basically a measure of inequality. And how we calculate it, it's the area A, which lies between the Lorentz curve and the line of equality. So there's this area A divided by the whole area underneath the line of equality, A plus B. A, by area A divided by A plus B. So if there was no inequality, this curve would be the straight line, that'd be a zero Gini coefficient. If it was perfect inequality, then the Lorentz curve would be the x-axis up to this point and then vertically up to the top right. Now, there's gonna be a separate topic video on the Gini coefficient, but this has been a brief introductory video looking at the Lorentz curve.